test, test. Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Bernoulli. You're watching Israeli News Live. The G7 summit's latest decision may very well spark a global conflict, at least a possible third world war. I know that sounds pretty provocative, and as we get into the, tonight's broadcast, a little bit later in the broadcast, we'll be getting into some of the news clips, both present and past, that we might help clarify what I mean by the statement that I'm making here. Not prophesying by no means, but at least sharing with you the things that the, uh, President Putin has said in the past, as well as... Uh, the threats of the G7 summit, what they're planning on doing, and how Putin has promised in the past that he would respond to such aggression against his country. He does consider this aggression, by the way. Anyway, also yesterday we were speaking to you about some news, uh, different news broadcasts. One of those things was one of the news, uh, Russian news that I used. The sources there got some comments. People were trying to find that. Tonight in this broadcast, there will be a link to that. So those of you that want to look at that, you'll be able to see it. It's also, I'll be reusing that broad, that particular uh, newscast uh, from uh, World War III, uh, a Russian website there. Be using, again, that same particular uh, uh, information there tonight, so you'll get to see it again. You'll get to see again the link to it. I did recheck the translation there, got a little bit more clear, so it makes more sense. Uh, also, uh, another thing I want to share with you is got questions about where the Czech uh, news was stating that uh, this whole situation down in the Balkans could very well ignite a third world war. Uh, that is something, though, where friends had asked me about a link for that. Unfortunately, C24.CZ is the Czech uh, television station there. Uh, I don't know how you would find it like that. It was just a regular news broadcast. Our family is fluent in multiple languages here, including Hungarian, Czech, uh, Russian, Slovak, etc. So we do monitor different news sites uh, in that regards there. So that's how we got the news there. Another one that was interesting today uh, that came out, and that was the former defense minister of the Czech Republic, Alexander Vondra, who stated on the uh, broadcast today, no, not quote unquote, but pretty close to this, that if Donald Trump became president of the United States, that they fear the U.S. would be pulled out of NATO, out of the, not so much out of NATO, but out of the European Union, because as he put it, that uh, the U.S. is here to protect the countries here from Russia. They're afraid of the threat of Russia, so the U.S. is here. But it comes with a price. And once he said that, you know, that President uh, Trump, as he called it, if he became president, were to find out that the Czech Republic is only paying 1% of their bill, uh, they may, he may not like that too well and end up pulling out the United States from the European Union and destabilize the entire region, which would also send the region into a global conflict. Anyway, that was his take on that. Now, we did get out into the field. Well, you know, yesterday we tick on live stream. Those that are watching Israeli News Live on our live stream, uh, we were trying to put up the troops that were in the Czech Republic here. Uh, it did since come out publicly that they do have the troops here. Uh, some of you have written to me and said that, you know, Steve, this is part of a, uh, a military drill that the U.S. does, and that is true. We checked it out with the Army military uh, website, army.mil. May 26 says 13 nations gather for saber strike 16. So it is true. They are gathering for that. But you're going to find out in the news tonight here, RT News is pointing, though, how this is keeping Russia extremely on edge, what's going on. Anyway, the article on, uh, on the Army's website said approximately 10,000 personnel from 13 countries that participate in the U.S. Army's Europe-led joint multinational exercise, Saber Strike 16. I thought that was kind of interesting how the U.S. Army is saying the European-led. Well, it seems like to me everywhere I look, it's always a... Uh, uh, American-led uh, photographs that we're that you're seeing here are photographs that we have taken ourselves. This is a file photo of ours, uh, but pretty much the same. You're going to get to see in a few minutes some of the video footage we took. And we said the aim of the exercise is to facilitate cooperation among Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Well. Anyway, Russia looks at it a little bit different. RT News stated there, in fact, this is one of the vehicles that, that led the convoy that we were able to catch there on the interstate in the Czech Republic as they were leaving. Uh, they've been leaving in small little convoys, uh, but it's quite a number of, 
uh, vehicles, 400 different vehicles uh, with about 1,400 troops that are being moved to the Balkans. Uh, so they're moving in small sections there. It's one of the, like I said, the photo of the lead vehicle that we caught the, today. Anyway, it says Russia has repeatedly said it is alarmed over NATO's increased activity in Eastern Europe and in the Baltics. Earlier in May, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry uh, Puskov said NATO Russian relations are quickly rolling back to the state of the Cold War era. We are still alarmed over the expansion of NATO presence and the bloc's ongoing enlargement towards our borders. So they don't like it at all. Not, not in the least bit do they seem to like it. This here, as you see on your screen, this is where uh, we had caught up with the convoy. My father-in-law actually saw, saw him pass. I didn't even get to see it and let me know where, where we needed to head to go catch it there. So we were able to catch the, the one of the convoys that are leaving. They started leaving the other night at 4 a.m. And again, uh, we see this little small convoy of probably about a dozen vehicles in this all together as we caught it. Uh, you didn't get to see everything on the footage there because I didn't get the camera up in time. Uh, but that's what we were actually seeing ourselves. Uh, moving right along though, U.S. plans in early summer to start World War III or disable the SWIFT in Russia. This was the article I think that some of you were asking about the other day. The U.S. Federal Reserve encouraged all major Western companies to completely shut down its operations in Russia before the summer of this year. This TSN.UA Ukrainian TV channel said political analysts uh, Taras uh, Ber Brzovitz citing insider information. Ukraine is really good about really spilling the beans on what U.S. plans are, by the way. Uh, but yes, they did spill the beans on that. And there is a major concern about that. Anyway, uh, May 27th of 2016, the U.S. State Department sanctions against Russia should remain in force. Uh, this is the U.S. Uh, State Department did not specify the G7 group statement on the possible new sanctions against Russia because of the situation in Crimea and Ukraine, but again called on Moscow to fulfill Minsk agreements and return the peninsula to, to its rightful owner. I, all I can say is that sanctions against Russia should remain in force with regard to its actions in Crimea and as well as in the East Ukraine as long as it does not fulfill its Minsk obligation. Now the funny thing is, Minsk never says anything about the returning of Crimea back to Ukraine. But this is what the G7 summit is claiming. Now, let's back up a minute just so we can really make this clear. According to www.3world-war.su, SU of Soviet Union, they stated in theirs, U.S. plans in early summer start World War III or disable the SWIFT in Russia, the SWIFT code. That's the banking transaction that allows Russia to deal with other banks around the world, like any bank does. It's the movement of funds. All right? The Fed is talking about disabling that. So now we see on May 27th, the G7 summit is talking about these sanctions being in place and they're not going to lift them unless Russia returns Crimea. Russia's not going to return Crimea, friends. Now, as far as Eastern Ukraine, I can't say that Russia wouldn't concede that area over there and allow Ukraine to retake it. But if they do, it'll be a bloodbath for the Russian people that live in Eastern Ukraine. That I can guarantee you. Going back, though, to the www.3worldwar.su's website and the, the uh, Russian site here. Now, keep in mind, if you try to run in this title into uh, a search engine, you're not going to find it. This is a translation of a Russian language website. I will put the link, though, inside of, uh, inside of our... Um, um, the, the subject line here under the video here on YouTube so you can check it out for yourself but it is in the Russian language and I've translated this uh, uh, as well so if you use Google Translate you may have it a little tweaked a little different okay anyway it says political technologist Vladimir Mons 
states here, however, it should be noted that these recommendations can still be associated with a possible impending armed provocation against Russia, which can lead to the beginning of the Third World War. Only the Fed does not take into account the factor that the Russian president made it clear understanding to their Western and overseas partners that Russia would firmly defend its interests by all available means. And if you start World War III, it certainly will hook all and will have a desire, dire consequences for the EU economy and for the U.S. economy. It may be that this conflict will be the last and biggest fiasco in the history of the United States. So the point is, the article here is trying to show you that these sanctions that they're doing and, the, and they're talking about here that this is going to be a step up in the sanctions. They're talking about cutting Russia off completely from the rest of the global economy by cutting them out in the SWIFT code process. All right? And, and this writer here of this article is reminding you that Russia has stated what they'll do if they're pushed to the limit like this. All right. Let me show you what G7 actually says. This is on BBC. Now, I did use it from the Russian language one. But I'm sure if you use BBC, you can still get the same, uh, same type of uh, uh, document, May 27th of 2016. G7 counters... Uh, countries agree to extend sanctions against Russia. Watch what they say, though. Prime Minister, Prime Minister David Cameron, during a speech at the summit, Big Seven, announced that participated in the summit countries have agreed to extend sanctions against Russia in June of 2016. According to him, the extensions of sanctions against Russia is critical. The leaders of the Group 7 believe that the ex existing sanctions should remain in force until the Minsk agreement will not be fulfilled, fully implemented, said David Cameron. So in other words, if they don't hand over Crimea, they're not going to change it. And the article goes on to state they're going to add to even some new types of sanctions as well. All right? That's serious. That's very serious, friends. I got a note just now. Brother Kellen said, I'm praying for your safety. Thank you, Brother Kellen. U.S. will not forgive Putin's victory in Syria. A new year is inevitable. This was uh, written by an Italian journalist. I found it on a Russian website. It was back in February of this year. Uh, Guglietto Chiesa. I wanted to read just a little small portion of the article, though. It says, Russian step-by-step -step wins in the fight against, the ISIS, against ISIS in Syria. And the United States, together with their puppets, first of all, NATO will not forgive Russia and its president the victory over their thugs. That's pretty provocative for an Italian uh, journalist to state NATO will not forgive Russia and its president, talking about President Putin, the victory over their thugs because Putin stopped the war. He turned it around. Not that they stopped it, but he, he made a great hindrance to what NATO was trying to accomplish by overthrowing Bashar al-Assad. He goes on, now they have just launched a new campaign to discredit and even demonize Putin. His fortitude and firmness Lead, uh, to lead the West into a rage, as, or has led the West into a rage. At the moment, there is e every reason to say that there is a confrontation between the West and Russia over a new war. In any case, the West is making every effort to unleash it. The article is very interesting. It's on Ru uh, uh, Rusin, rusnext.ru, February 17, 2016. If you just type in the guy's name, you'll find the article. You have to translate it, though, the entire thing to be able to see it. Friends, we're, we're in a really serious, very precarious situation here. Vladimir Putin made it quite clear that he would defend Russia against any kind of aggression, even economic aggression. If he saw that the economic aggression would cause the destabilizing of his nation, 
he would retaliate. He's even going, going so far to say he would use nuclear weapons. Now, the United States Obama administration, let me clarify that too, because I've had people even write me about this. Steve, please say the Obama administration. I realize that, friends. I know that the American people are not the same way. I think even Donald Trump, he's got a lot more sense by far than the Obama administration. And I can't say he's the right guy to choose for president. I definitely would not choose Hillary at all. Or is it Hillary? Hillary or Hillary? Something like that. Anyway, I wouldn't choose her by, by no means. And, and the other guy there that's still in the race against Hillary, um, <laughs> that's just a joke. Anyway, friends, we're in a serious hour. Whether or not the United States will do a first strike on Russia or not, I have no idea. It's looking like it, and there's a lot of people that believe that it will happen. I think what's going to happen is they're going to ignite it through a different means. If you remember a little while back, Erdogan, or actually uh, the, the uh, Ukrainian source that I had found, was saying that, that the uh, Turkish president, Erdogan, would work with Ukraine to take back Crimea, and they would get some help to do it. It looks like to me that the United States is planning with NATO to strike Russia on a, on, on a number of fronts, perhaps in some small skirmishes first, only to justify them coming in to back up what's going on. And I think Crimea is going to be the first one. Also, we see that uh, the United States is going to go ahead with putting in the THAAD system. This is supposedly a defense system that gets put into, uh, uh, that will be put there in South Korea. But the Russian uh, specialists have said that this system here is definitely not for North Korea because it's a high altitude system. Uh, so in other words, if it launches a missile towards North Korea, it could never come back down quick enough to hit North Korea. It's either designed for China or Russia. It is obvious that the United States is surrounding Russia. So regardless of our thoughts on Russia, it's not a good scenario at all, friends. Not good at all. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. God bless you.